A huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I love capturing self-portraits when I'm out under the stars and the Milky Way. It really adds a human element and encourages the viewer to imagine what it was like actually being there. But I'm typically out alone and people always ask me, how do you fire the shutter if you're all the way over there? And how do you stand still to get a sharp silhouette? Well, I'm gonna answer those questions in today's video, tips that you can use in the field when you're shooting. And when that's not enough, I'm gonna show you guys how to fix the images in Photoshop in post-production. So the most obvious point is that the larger you are in the frame, the more your motion is gonna be visible. So we wanna make ourselves smaller in the frame. And there's two ways we can do that. The first is to increase the distance between you and the camera. The further you are from the camera, the smaller you're gonna be and the less any motion is gonna be visible. And the second way to make yourself smaller in the frame is to use a wide angle lens. The wider the lens, the smaller you're gonna be in the frame. And so using a 14 millimeter or a full frame camera and just walking five to 10 meters, you'll actually be really small in the frame and it creates this illusion that you're really far away but in reality, it's only like 10 meters. So then I get asked, how do you fire the shutter? Now, sometimes I like to put a 10 second delay on the camera and I'll run into the scene and see if I can get there in time for the photograph. But when there's dodgy terrain and huge cliff drops that you might fall off and die, it's not the best technique. So there are safer ways. One of those is to use a remote shutter. So I use the Pixel TW283 and it has a receiver, wireless receiver that you plug into the camera so you can fire it from far away. And so I like to set a five second delay on the shutter in my camera. And then when I fire the shutter from far away, I can see a little light on the front of my camera. So I know it's received the signal and I've got five seconds to turn around and strike my pose. But more often I'll use an intervalometer. So you can use an external intervalometer, again, the Pixel TW283, or you can use an internal intervalometer if you have one built into your camera's menu already. And what I'll do is I'll set up a 30 second to a one minute delay. So that gives me time to walk into the scene and set up. And then I'll set my camera to take continuous 15 to 30 second exposures, depending on which lens that I'm using. And there'll be five seconds gap in between each exposure. And often when you're out in these remote locations at night, it's very quiet. And so, so long as you're not using the silent electronic shutter, use the mechanical shutter and you should be able to hear the shutter closing at the end of an exposure. And because you've got a five second gap between the next image, you can slightly adjust your position or change to a completely different pose altogether. Try five or six and then go back to your camera and see if there's any that you're happy with. If it's not quiet enough to hear the shutter from a distance, maybe it's windy and you've got a hat on and a hood on, I'll just stand there for one minute in the same position and then change to a different position for another minute and usually at least one image per pose will be sharp. And another tip, I will hold my breath during the exposure so as to prevent any chest movement, or at the least I will breathe quite gently and be conscious of my chest moving. Now, if you want your silhouette to have impact, it's really important to have separation. So typically I like to have my silhouette completely against a backdrop of sky and stars. Or in this case, from La Palma, I use the clouds in the valley and you've got these really nice white clouds, dark silhouette, and it just stands out as a humid figure. Another example in the Elam Valley in Wales, where I used the bright surface of the water to create separation around my silhouette. If your silhouette is sort of half on the sky and half in the foreground, it just doesn't stand out and it won't have that immediate impact on the viewer. Now, sometimes you're quite limited in the field. So here's an example from Snowdonia in North Wales. I was on top of a mountain, so I couldn't get any further away from the camera. I was using the widest lens that I had and so you can see there's some movement visible in my silhouette so in this instance it would be a lot better to just sit down because you can be a lot more still when you sit down but again keep in mind you still want that separation around your subject so that it pops and stands out and I usually like going for this sideways profile with my leg cocked out and one hand resting on the knee because it's immediately recognizable as a human figure and not just a lump on the floor <laughs> but we could fix this image in Photoshop and before I show you how to do that 
I'd like to thank the amazing sponsors of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes and members from over 150 different countries. If you enjoy my videos, I'm sure you'll love the astrophotography content on Skillshare, especially Ian Norman's Nightscapes Landscape Astrophotography class. It's an amazing introduction for beginners to landscape astrophotography, and if you just want to brush up on the basics again, it's really good to go over. But you can find classes on all things creative, photography, videography, video editing, logo design, website design, graphic design, freelancing. So whether you're looking for a new hobby or you want to add some new skills to your resume to improve your career prospects, or maybe you want to start your own business, the small fee of Skillshare Premium is a great investment in yourself. I've used Skillshare for so many things over the past few years. Marquez Brownlee's YouTube success class really helped to improve the production quality of my videos. And I've gone through all of Ali Abdel's productivity classes to help me be more efficient in my photography business and also to help organize my YouTube planning a lot better. And Skillshare are offering the first 1,000 of you to follow the link in the video description down below a completely free month of Skillshare Premium. Seriously, you can try as many classes as you like for a month. So don't miss out. Come and join thousands of others taking the next step in their creative journey by following the link in the video description down below. Okay, coming back to this image, it's a single exposure captured at f2, 15 seconds, ISO 3200. And I was working quickly because the moon was about to rise any second. It was the last minutes that I had with the Milky Way. And so I don't think I checked my images. And as you can see, there's a lot of blur around my silhouette, which is not good. And I've also put this image through Lightroom's new AI denoise feature, which I'll be making a video about very soon. So make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't already. But I'm going to fix this image with a combination of the brush tool, which is this one here. You could press B as a keyboard shortcut and also the clone stamp tool, which has a keyboard shortcut of S. And if you're not familiar with the clone stamp tool, it's basically like a brush but you choose a different area of the image to clone. So I'm gonna make my brush size bigger and holding Option on a Mac or Alt on a Windows PC, you will select a source. So I have this target as my mouse and I'm gonna click on my head and that's selected my source. Now I can brush that area of the image somewhere else. So I could just brush that silhouette in here somewhere and obviously that's not done a very good job, but hopefully you understand what the clone stamp tool is doing. Now I like to do my fixes on a new layer. So in the layers panel, you can come to the bottom, you have a square with a plus that will create a new layer. And then when you're using the clone stamp tool in this way, just make sure on sample at the top, you have current and below. So that when you make the source, it looks at the layer below as well as the layer you're working on. And I'm going to set opacity of the brush to somewhere between 70 and 80%, just so that it's not an immediate clone and it will blend in a little bit better. And I'm going to zoom in to the silhouette here. And I'm going to change my brush size to something pretty small, around 10 pixels, I guess. Maybe a little bit smaller. So 9 looks pretty good. And then for the hardness, you want a hard brush to get a sharp edge, but you don't want it completely 100% hard. So again, somewhere around 80% for this probably should be fine. And then I'm going to hold Option or Alt on a Windows PC and select this bit of sky as my source and brush it over the blurred part of my shoulder. I'm going to select the source here again and do it again, just sort of blend it in. Whoops, got a bit too far there. Um, and just to help it kind of blend in a little bit better. So you can see there's a bit of a dark patch coming through here, so I can change the source and just brush over with the 80% um, opacity brush. And you want to keep doing that. I'm just going to keep brushing around the edge here and uh, probably a good time to fast forward. Now with this edge here, if I was to remove that in this method, my leg would be very thin and weird. So what I can do is take the brush tool instead and holding Option or Alt on a Windows PC, you can sample a color and then I'm just going to brush with that color. I'm going to keep sampling colors and blending it in quite naturally just so that my leg doesn't end up too thin and weird. 
I'm using similar brush settings as well, so 7 pixels, 74% hardness. And then if I want to go back to the clone stamp, I can press S, and I can clone stamp this edge here. Be careful with lines like this, because you want them to line up. So you have to do that sort of horizontally. And I'm just going to keep going over these edges. Now, there's a bit of my hair here, so I don't mind that edge being a little bit blurry, so I'm not going to fix that too much because that would have been blowing in the wind so but then when I get to the hat I want it to be nice and sharp and just be careful about cloning stars here because it can be quite obvious so if I do that it's obvious that that star has been cloned so just take a blank patch of sky and just get rid of it okay and so with just those two tools and I worked very quickly just for demonstration purposes that's the before and that's the after. You can see we have a much sharper silhouette now. There's quite a lot of motion blur that's been removed. But that's pretty much how you get a nice sharp edge on your silhouette if there's a little bit of blur and there was nothing better that you could have done in the field. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thanks for tuning in. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you go out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.